Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to mold 56. We've got a skinny long mold with four holes. So I pour each of them up and it appears that two of the holes are both connected. So I open up the piece after setting it and I reveal a gorgeous set of handles for a mug or a crockery pot. You could just about put this on anything you like. You could put it on a planner pot, which is really exciting. So this is what the mold looks like. It is DM1739 and it says that it's for the piece DM1737. I don't know if I have that mold, but I'm going to put this carrot and onion handle onto a mug that I've already revealed in a previous reveal, which is a sort of upright tumbler shape. The other mug mold that I have already has the handle on it and this is the only one I've revealed so far that doesn't have the handle because if I didn't have if I hadn't have revealed this yet, I think we would have been in a bit of strife because I do I wouldn't have known what to attach it to other than spending time throwing my own vessels. But I kind of like being able to use all the mystery mold stuff as a part of this series even though I do dabble in all parts of pottery. So with the handle, to give it a little bit of extra strength after scratching and scoring, I add a little bit of a coil. It's like a sloppy slurry of coil <laughs> around the join. And that is really just to strengthen it and also to clean it up and make it look really smooth and not like it's all splodgy and just shoved onto the mug. I do this with both the handles. The carrot was a little bit trickier to attach to the mug shape because I'm adapting these handles to a mug shape that they weren't designed for. So I was very cautious not to bend and sort of break these beautiful handles. I have jumped straight into it this week and I haven't even spoken about the mold itself. This is such a cool design. It is really lovely to see this carrot been sculpted in such a purposeful and intentional way to be a part of a mug and I instantly thought of your classic vintage soup mug so I had these screen silk screens of vegetables that I randomly bought way before I even got the molds and I haven't even used them yet and I thought this would be so perfect to test on and make this like a very um, like rustic patina sort of faded patina finished mug to make it look like those old soup mugs that you see at the op shops all the time I used to love those and it was my favorite thing on a Sunday we used to do a tomato soup night with like a cheese toasty or just like a piece of toast and we always have it in the mug the tomato soup mug that had the recipe on it so I'm not going to be that ambitious to do the recipe but I am going to try these silk screens on the mugs and then I'm going to use my new Cricut which was gifted to me thank you so much Cricut Australia um, and I'm going to make a a soup mug stencil to go over the top of all these screens. For the screen printing, it is a new thing that I am trialing. So what I did is Chrysantho say that their underglazes are pretty much right for screen printing straight away, but I already water mine down a lot just for the way I like to use them. So I added the silk screen medium to thicken them up to the paste like the instructions said in the what came with the silk screens. I figured it would be better to go thicker so that I don't end up with a runny mess underneath that silk screen. I have to keep scraping it off. Like I'd rather go water it down and get the right consistency as I go. And every screen I did, I got better and better and better at it. And I think, yeah, Chrysantho is spot on. If you buy it straight from them, um, it is perfect a perfect medium to just rub through those screens but if you water them down like me you you might need to grab some of that um silk screen medium to add to them i'm not sure about other underglazes though because i've just used the chrysanthos brand in this video now before i get anyone in the comments being like oh you're using your fingers to touch things um 
Yeah, it says in the instructions to use your fingers. Uh, it also recommends that if you do get skin irritations to wear gloves. It's my body, my choice. So I've just done the hands. I don't need gloves. All my underglazes and glazes are perfectly safe. Um, I mean, everything's an exposure to something bad eventually. Uh, I, you pick your battles, you pick your battles. And I'm okay with putting my fingers in this stuff and it's my choice. So don't come for me in the comments about it. Um, if you want to do this, <laughs> in your own work um, make sure if you do get skin irritations or you're a bit concerned about that that you do wear gloves because that is again your choice anyway back to the mug I decided that I am going to paint the handle but I'm going to do that detailing effect of adding the wash after it's been bis fired and I'm going to wash it back so that it leaves the underglaze in the divots of the vegetable to make it look like it's illustrated like the screen printing on the mug so it ties the handle in like they were meant to be together and that is just making me so excited because at the start of this week I gotta admit I was really dreading this mold because I was so uninspired but then I got this Cricut gifted and I was able to set up a just a plain sort of like typewriter-ish te text, um, like a serify text. Um, and I just got soup mug and I, I cut it out onto some removable vinyl. And if you're smart, you can use these little stencils again and again and again on different pieces of pottery or different pieces of things. So you can be really strategic in how you cut these out so that you can use them again which is what I did. So I kept the letters and the backdrops so I can use them on more pieces and more soup mugs. I then, once it's been cut by the Cricut, I've cut out the individual letter, uh, individual words and then I weed out the individual letters. I cut each word out and then attach it onto the piece very gently so that it doesn't stick to the underglaze and peel that off and then I put the underglaze into the stencil. Wow, I really took a long time to get that out of my mouth. <laughs> anyway, I did that and I did that with each mug but as I went on, um, some beautiful ideas were flowing in the studio and we did the soup mug, we did a good soup mug, we did a eat your vegetables mug and another soup mug. So we didn't just stick with just that plain soup mug idea but as I said before, I was feeling really uninspired. I was kind of dreading doing it because I didn't know how I was going to execute this to make it feel like a soup mug. And when I remember to have those silk screens, it just made my week. I was so excited because I, I have wanted to try them and the fact that I got to try them on a mystery mold was just the best. And I actually had so much fun. I didn't even show you half the process, but Every single time you do a new silk screen, it's like, oh, did I get it good? Did I get it good? And then you peel it away and it just, every time it looks so awesome. Like even if you mess it up, the rustic movement of the underglaze, it just adds to that sort of feel and just this handmade uniqueness of it. Even though you are using like a pre-made screen, it's just, it's just such a magical process. And I can see so much potential in it because I have always loved screen printing and it makes me want to play around with my own designs as a screen print and how I could do lots of different types of layering and ah, oh, it's just such a cool thing. And I'm just so happy that I got to use the Cricut on this piece as well. It's just been a really fun week of playing with, I guess this concept of a suit mug and playing with it with some modern techniques with the Cricut and sort of intertwining that with the vintage feel of these handles. Like this reveal is about these handles and we're bringing them in in such a beautiful way it just excites me so much so now they are ready for glazing I first pour the glaze inside tip it out sponge away any of the drips so that it's nice and clean for when we dip it in the glaze I then dip them in the glaze and then I pop them in the kiln now this mug I forgot from last time but I started packing the kiln and I had the two stilts at the back to get ready for the shelf as I was packing the mugs in, I was totally in my own world, like going, yeah, this is fitting good, this is this is gonna be perfect, we'll put our stilt in. And I don't know if you can see that, but the stilt is shorter than the mug. Uh, so I was thinking, well, let's 
try something else. Let's unpack it and put the shelf more onto the side and put these mugs so that they're no longer under the shelf. So I repacked the kiln again, uh, put all the mugs down the side for where I could fit them and they just weren't all going to fit. So here's me just Tetrising. So this happens pretty much every week with every new mystery mold. I just thought I'd show you this week that this is what I go through. It's not as seamless as I make it look. I eventually got to the point where I was like, we're not putting a shelf in this week. We're just going to do one layer. Um, it's just the way the cookie crumbled. But here is the finished result after the kiln firing that night. And m my gosh, <laughs> my gosh, I am so, I have not stopped smiling since I pulled them out of the kiln. Like I have not stopped smiling. I was, I, I don't know, these are just so gorgeous and they have come out exactly how I imagined them and if it weren't for remembering I had those silk screens I don't think this reveal would have ended this way I don't think I would have come to these ideas in the same way and how the power of different materials and mixed media can come into play with pottery just to make it feel like a whole new piece and I've got to say a massive thank you to Cricut Australia for gifting me a Cricut because I wouldn't have been able to get that really cool text to like match in with this whole style of the mug. The fact that I could make these stencils really rustic and sort of in a really matchy matchy text that suited the whole style of these mugs. Ah, oh, chef's kiss quite literally. I am so proud of this week's reveal because again, something totally different that I probably would never have tried if it weren't for these mystery molds. Like I probably would never have gotten around to those silk screens if it weren't for this mold. I am a very happy chappy this week. I would love to know what you think of these molds and what you think I should maybe do with the handles next. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this week's reveal and here is your sneak peek for next week's.